Hello friends, this is the Spa Guy, and in this video, we're gonna go back over the last several years that I have been busting myths and finding things that nobody even knew about, discovering things, bringing things out in the Elvis story. I finally hit, thanks to all of you, 100,000 subscribers. So this video is going to be going back and just looking at just little tidbits of discoveries and myths busted and that sort of thing. First, I'd like to thank my wife, Lori, for putting up with me through all of this. I don't think most of you realize how much work this is and how much commitment it takes to do all of these things. But it takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment to do it but it's a labor of love. I absolutely enjoyed it. It was nothing but fun doing all this. Now, there's been some people trying to suck joy out of this, but we'll talk about that later. Next, I'd like to thank Globe Trotting with Trey, Trey Miller. He has stuck with me. We have uh, discovered things, we've explored, we've found things, and we've searched the world over looking for Elvis history and other people's history as well. Um, and there's things that you can see on this channel and on Trey's channel, Globe Trotting with Trey, that you can't find anywhere else on any of these Elvis channels. All these Elvis channels are people sitting home taking footage and things that have already been done and stories that have already been told and just telling them again to get hits on their channel. That's not what we do. We go out and actively search for new stuff. If you're looking for something new, this is where you come get it or Globe Trotting with Trey. If you're looking for the same old stories told over and over and over and over again, this is not the right place. Globe Trotting with Trey is not the right place. So stay tuned and I'm going to take you through just a few of the discoveries and the myths busted up to 100,000 subscribers. No telling what we can find in the next 100,000. Thank y'all so much for watching and thank you for supporting this effort. Without you supporting the effort and watching these videos, there's no reason for us to go out and do this other than just capturing history. I guess if nobody watched, I'd still be doing it because it is absolutely fun. Thank you so much for watching and check this out. The first 100,000 or thanks to you. If you're not subscribed, by the way, do it now. Don't keep watching and not subscribe. That's not fair to the creators. Thank you so much. So friends, we're gonna take you to this street right here that used to be called Bells, B-E-L-Z. It is now called Eldridge. Bill Black, lived at 967 which is that one right there and Scotty lived at 983 which is that one right there you see the one on the right is 981 one on the left is 983 he lived right there so friends what I'm about to show you is the inside of Scotty Moore's apartment where Elvis came on July the 4th 1954 to audition. This is the first time that he ever met Scotty Moore and Bill Black and Scotty and Bill listened to Elvis that day to try to decide if they wanted to actually record and spend time with him. Turned out they did. That's All Right Mama was recorded the very next night. Bill Black lived right back down there. We're going to walk down there but Elvis walked right up this sidewalk. Of course this looks different. But these were the same, these steps. He walked through this door into this room. And this is the room that Elvis auditioned for Scotty Moore and Bill Black in the very first time they ever met, right here. Yep, these three guys, Scotty Moore on the left, Elvis in the middle, Bill Black on the right, met the very first time here the next night they recorded That's All Right Mama. The beginning of rock and roll happened right here. We started trying to investigate it. I, he's right. It's right here. So we're like, okay, so how do we know for a fact that it's right here? So I started studying this picture, and we noticed a little anomaly. You see Elvis standing there in front of the old, I think that was a Lincoln Zephyr. I want you to look right there. 
just over the top of the hood, right just to the right of my finger. That is the top of a fire plug. I believe that that fire plug was right there. You see that there's a driveway right there, which would have been for that unit right there. So you see the fire plugs there, the driveway would have been right there. You can see the white of the driveway. So that would have been directly in front of his neighbor's house. So Elvis's house would have been right here. Just basically where that St. Jude Children's Hospital sign is. That little cleaner's right there. Scotty Moore's brother owned that shop. And Scotty worked here as a hatter, believe it or not. He worked on hats and worked with hats when he wasn't playing music. And after Scotty and Elvis and Bill got together and decided to create a band, they would practice upstairs right up here. So this was the room, friends. And you can see that they've the ceiling stuff is starting to fall in. In fact, they had to do something to the roof up there. But that definitely is the window that Scotty is standing in front of, no question. Saying that they practiced right over there. All right, friends, after much investigation, I found it. I don't know that this building is old enough, but I really have not been able to find any exterior pictures of the Bon Air Club. And then I was able to find one. This is the market basket in the old Bon Air building before it was torn down and turned into this building. So in the 1954 city directory, you can see it says Bon Air Nightclub, Walter A. and Miss Ruth Clark, 4862 Summer Avenue. And that's where I'm standing right here, friends. So it was definitely there. This is, there's actually a turn in the wall. If you look at the bottom of their feet, the wall makes a turn right there where that seam is to the right of the guy with Elvis. That is right here. And of course the floor has changed. Just it's been tiled now it's carpet actually and but there's actually a turn right there so right there is actually the spot that this happened at Can that right there absolutely right. let's move those chairs and we'll have a shot right there okay so that right there and right there. Can you see it better here now with the yeah, you can clearly see the turn in the floor. I'm glad they stood there. If they st stood on a flat wall, you'd never know. <laughs> you'd never know. That's right. So it's definitely right it. here. That is the spot right wow. there. That is you can the see one. the turn. Elvis played right here. I'm going to show you a photo of that bar right there. And you're going to see that red pole in the photo. See that red pole right there? This is the eagle's nest for sure. And the story goes that a lady was going into the drugstore to get her film developed and she had one picture left and she happened to snap it of a young Elvis not having any clue who he was but later she gave it to the Presley family once she figured out that it was actually Elvis. And this would have happened at this drugstore right here which was S&S &S. and I'm going to show you a picture of the drugstore. And this is before the awning was torn off. Now you can see on the old drugstore picture the awning was there as well. Now there's no awning there uh, in the video as I showed you. So what you see, if you look to the right first, let's look at High Street, you see it's not directly in front of the drugstore or, or adjacent to that road. It's a little further up to the right and you see s, &S Drugs right there. You see the awning and you see the telephone pole right there. That is where he was in fact standing with that bicycle when the lady snapped his picture and walked into the drugstore to get her pictures developed. Right there, friends. So now let's compare this version to the version 
version of Elvis uh, on the bicycle. If you look to the right, you see those two rooftops. Now you see those same two rooftops in the part of the picture over on the right hand side. And you can see them again. And obviously the awning over his head, the telephone pole. So it all matches up, friends. This is Popular and High Street. S&S Drugstore, Memphis, Tennessee. And now let's talk about the bicycle a little bit. So it's believed that he got this bicycle, a Firestone Pilot Classic, on his 13th birthday because uh, Graceland found a picture of him on the same bicycle, but the fenders were there. In this picture, the fenders are removed. I'll show you that picture now. And in this picture, they found it with the number 13 written on the back of it, and it said Elvis's birthday. And that was in Gladys's picture collection. So let's start right here. This is Vernon's office behind Graceland. That right door that I have the arrow pointing to was a smokehouse. In the right corner is this bicycle. That bicycle is, in fact, this bicycle, Elvis's very first vehicle. And he owned this bicycle even when in Tupelo, which is this picture, making this a, something that actually came with them from Tupelo to Memphis when they move and is one of the oldest things at Graceland from that time period. After I released this video, EPE watched it and confirmed that I was correct and restored the bicycle and it is now in the museum at Graceland. So I'm going to start this video out with an important character. Most of you are familiar with the birth house. This is where Elvis was born. This is the birthplace. This was owned by Orville Bean, the man that you see on the right, the land was. And he actually gave or, or provided the building material and the land let Vernon Investor Presley build the house and they made payments to him and that's how it worked. So that kind of gives you an idea about the rest of this story. And Vernon worked for Orville Bean at times and Orville is how he ended up in jail. But some of you that think you already know the story have been told that Vernon was a forger. And that is not entirely true. That is a myth. And we're going to uncover why Vernon actually ended up in jail. And it was not that he forged anything. Check this out. And this is Orville Bean's story. This is what he said about it. I bought a hog from Mr. Presley and gave him a check for it. And he allowed two other young men to see the check and copy the signature. And the other men forged checks on me. And I understand understand they paid Presley about $15 of the money they got on the forged checks for allowing him to copy the signature of the legitimate check I gave him and not saying anything about it. But when Presley was asked about the matter, he told the whole truth at the very beginning. So the reality is the only thing that Vernon actually did was allow them to copy the signature on the check. And I've had people even say, well, he wrote this and lied to the governor. Guys, this was done in a time when truth mattered and people didn't lie to the governor. It wasn't a thing. So this myth has been busted. Vernon was not a forger, not even a little bit. It was the other two guys. And I know that hurts some people's feelings. Too bad. That's what happened. It, it is definitely there. Yeah. I want you to look when he was a kid. He didn't even put his E in there. And that, uh, I went back on... That says 1942, so that was... Let's see. Teacher should... It says, I hereby certify this has sold to Elvis Presley. I think he was just writing his name in there just messing because this book stayed in the library till 1950 yeah and see it's uh and he all, moved. all these over here are dated 42 41 yeah and he looked he moved to uh memphis. memphis in 48 so this thing so i think he just wrote his name in there just messing that possibility. This is an incredible find, man. Oh, that is incredible. Unbelievable. But see, that's that's possibility. The oldest signature. Old world background. Yeah. I went through it to see see right there. It says, Copyright 1934. Yes, yeah, it's Ms. Kemp. That was uh, 1941, 42. How amazing! Unbelievable. Is that?
So friends, I'm going to start this out by saying many of you recognize this cross. This is at Circle G Ranch. And when I told the very first story that I told about Circle G Ranch, I told you the stories that I read in books. Like that cross was put there by a family that lost a child. Elvis built the bridge. Elvis built the fence. He built the little restaurant that's there. And, you know, there's all kinds of things like that. So we're going to get to the bottom of those things. We have a special guest coming up. And stay tuned, friends. I'm so excited. I can't hardly wait for you to watch it. We're going to clear a lot of myths up about Circle G Ranch. Stay tuned. Saying, friends, this is Jack Adams Jr. His dad sold Circle G Ranch to Elvis. Correct. Is that not correct? That is correct. And so you stayed at Circle G Ranch. Yes. As a kid, yes. you go there and, and fish. Your dad built those ponds. That, uh, yeah, right. One one lake is what it was. Okay. Well, it's it's a big lake. Yeah, yeah. You, pond lake. You know. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty good sized. But that when your dad bought that land, it wasn't there. He actually built, he built the, the lake. That's yeah. right. And he also so right now we're going to clear up a couple of things. And I know this is early on, but let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Your dad built the bridge. That's correct. Elvis did not build the bridge. That's right. Okay. So we're going to clear another thing up, friends. Your dad built the cross. That's right. Okay. So the story has always been that a family lost a child and the cross was erected uh, in memory of the child. You don't have any siblings that your dad lost and he erected the cross. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so we're... Uh, Get, dispelling some myths right to start with. What do you think about that? So friends, I'm going to tell you a story and I'll tell you the details while we're looking at the picture, but this is Bellevue Road or Highway 51 or Elvis Presley Boulevard going this way. This way is South Parkway East. And if you look at this picture right here, you'll see that this is Elvis and a young lady on a motorcycle and this happened at this intersection and basically all the stuff that you see in this picture is gone except for that big skyscraper in the distance and you can see that that big skyscraper is right down there in the distance it's still there you look at this picture you can see it and then if you look right down there you can see it way out in the distance I'm gonna try to zoom you see it right there but this is the intersection that this happened at and all of those buildings are gone that was magic plastic furniture covers that was on the corner right here where the Exxon is and the road was not as wide as it is right now happened right here friends right at this intersection and I'll tell you the story about this young lady on the back of the motorcycle the tragic story stand by friends So friends, out here in this country road is where they actually called it, believe it or not, Hound Dog Ranch. And there is the right up right there. You see it says Presley's Hound Dog Ranch. That's the gate to it right there. So a lot of you did not know that this even existed, but there it is, friends. So friends, I would venture to say that most of you had no idea that this even existed. There's very little known about this place, but this is what they wrote about it. Purchased by Vernon Presley in 1974 and used frequently by his son Elvis, according to some of the older residents in the area. Hound Dog Ranch, 268 acres. Agriculture, it had uh, agricultural use. It has a bunch of ponds on it. It has a cabin that's actually a house. It's pretty large that's been restored. Uh, it's got that barn on it. Now, I know that the house, the cabin part is original because I've seen it in other things. Very few things written about this, but I've seen it in other places. And where I'm at now, if you look where the gate is, where I was at, is in the far right corner. I just turned by it, but the driveway that you see in front of you goes to the gate, which is on the far end of the property. All right, friends, this is 341, as you can see, Union Avenue. This used to be Madison Cadillac. Doesn't look like much, but I'm gonna show you something that I think is interesting, something I was able to find. 
this is a picture that I was able to find of Elvis in a jumpsuit. You see he's actually in the, wearing the jumpsuit. And if you look in the right hand side of that picture, you see that wall right there. This wall's been since torn down and they've also turned the parking places this way where back then you can actually see the line right here. This was the line in the picture. It was right there. The line is still somewhat still there, but you can see Elvis almost stepping on that line. And this block right here is in the picture as well. So he was right about here, real close to it, based off of the line. Actually, maybe a little bit closer to the line, right about here when somebody took his picture. You see that right there. You can see my foot right by the line and he's coming out of there. So this is where he would pick his Cadillacs up at. So there you go, friends, a glimpse of the king. That is actually in the photo, that wall right there. Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art. So friends, although it is all over the internet that these scenes were filmed here at this gymnasium. I use my Starsky-like research skills, not my hutch, my Starsky, and I don't think so. This was on a soundstage in LA, not here at UNLV. I can find no evidence of any of this structurally working with that building. Didn't happen here. So friends, something that you've seen, if you're an Elvis fan, an iconic scene that is in a movie. This is Culver Boulevard and Overland Street. Overland goes this way. And this place is 4117. It has stuff to do with sports. You see they have this sculpture out here that has a film strip on it. And there's an auditorium in here. Let's see if we can get in. In fact, it's called Veterans Memorial Auditorium, Culver City, California, built in 1950. This is the room that Come On Everybody was filmed in, right on that stage right there. And I'll tell you how you'll know, because you'll remember from the video, Elvis standing on the stage right here and looking down at Ann Margaret, seeing that. It looked like two balconies, but you could see there's a thing in between that broke it up and it was dark up there. So it looked very different than what we expected. But this is where this happened at, right on this stage. Oh, come on everybody and clap your hands real loud. Come on everybody. <laughs> so when you hear them say that that was shot at UNLV, it was not. It was shot right here in Culver City at Veterans Memorial Auditorium on this stage. So friends, I can't believe I'm standing here looking at this. I've seen it in photographs, I've seen it in videos. 41 years to the day, I'm seeing it in person, right there. I've been looking for this thing for years. August the 16th, 2018 was my day. There it is right there. I feel like uh, Indiana Jones and I've just captured the Temple of Doom. <laughs> I've been through, I cannot believe it. It is right there. Friends, this is King Ree's studio where Elvis practiced karate. Graceland is, if you went right there and went to the intersection and turn right, Graceland's right down there. So let's go in, let's take a look. Of course it's changed a lot, but they have, it still has the columns. I'm gonna show you some photographs. So it's been turned into a shop now. They do automation and, and those kinds of things. But this room, used to be wide open, right? Yes, it was completely, they added that wall right there. And the posts that you see 
Let's look at these posts. That post right there that you see right there, you can see that they're painted. These are them, and they used to be white. You can actually see up at the top where they were white in color. And there's a photograph where there's a vent right over here. So that vent, you said there's stuff in front of it. Yeah. So that's where those shelves are right there. Yeah, but the vent you can see, well, it's all covered now, but it's this right vent back behind there. This vent that they're talking about right there, he says it is right behind those shelves right there. The Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum is a new attraction in Memphis, Tennessee that honors Karate Master Kong Ri and his most famous black belt, Mr. Tiger. See the actual dojo restored in its original glory that Mr. Tiger worked out in from 1970 to 1974. Relax in the Tiger Den and learn history of his incredible life. Explore the Tiger Museum and view items gifted to his family and rare finds from personal collections. And for the first time ever, see the iconic amulets from August 16, 1977, all here at Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum. So friends, this museum was the culmination of all these stories coming into one place and the first 100,000 subscribers got me there. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate you watching. So friends, thank you so much for staying and watching all of these things, these myths busted, these new things found, and Thank you for supporting this channel and me getting to 100,000 subscribers. It means a lot. I plan on doing a whole lot more. There's all kinds of things out there to find. And now I want to thank some people that didn't want me to be successful. And we'll start with the Smith family. That would be Billy and Joe and Joey and Ruth Ann and Danielle and Dan, Danny and Teresa. None of y'all wanted me to succeed and did everything that you could do to try to stop it. Next, I want to thank uh, Perfidy Thompson. Some people call him Patrick. Look up Perfidy. It fits perfect. And his wife. Next, I would like to thank Con Daly and his girlfriend, Mary Clark. Uh, y'all didn't want me to succeed either. And, you know, there's actually a Bible story about that where... Joseph, the Joseph of the coat of many colors, Joseph, you're probably familiar with the Dolly Parton song. His brothers were jealous of him and actually threw him into a pit. They were going to murder him, but decided to actually sell him into slavery, and that's what they did. You know, David ended up king. And then when those guys came looking for uh, help, guess what? So... All of you people that were against me, that were trying to destroy what I was doing, trying to take me down for whatever your motivation may be, I appreciate you too because all you did was reinforce that I am looking for the truth and gave me a platform to show how big of uh, uh, turds y'all are. Uh, Glenn Johnson would be another one um, and his uh, girlfriend Patty. Patricia, and all these people wanted to see me fail, but guess what, guys? It was the hard work and perseverance that did it. I'm quoting William Hung. Yep, I got off my butt, got out there, and found things. Did the work. That's why I have 100,000 subscribers. And that's why a lot of you don't have 100,000 subscribers that feel like you're entitled to it. If you will actually go and do work, do good work, be complimentary, help other people, all those things will get you to where you're going. I actually invited other people, encouraged other people to do channels. Trey, Globetrotting with Trey, Ashley Drew, Stephen Schutz, those people did their channels and I encouraged them to do it. And the reason that I did was because there's enough room for all of us. You don't have to blow somebody else's candle out to make yours glow brighter. The answer is to get the people to watch. You do good work. There's enough room for all of us. You don't have to destroy other people because you're not getting the attention that you feel like you deserve. But I'm very appreciative and very humbled that I have finally reached 100,000 subscribers. 
It took a long time and a lot of work and a lot of dedication. And I'm very thankful for all of you. And I'm thankful that you have uh, given me the opportunity to do this. I am, I am just humbled by the whole experience and I'm just very appreciative. I thank you so much for allowing me to go out and do these things and find these things. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, it helps us as, as uh, uh, creators. It's important. And tell other people. And let the people know that have been fooled by the, some of the people that I just named. Let them know that a lot of that stuff is just straight up lies. It's nothing but jealousy and people trying to destroy me thinking that it's going to make them have more attention. And that's just not the, the case. The answer is hard work and perseverance. Check into it for you people that don't do the hard work and perseverance. Thank you all for watching and tighten up every chance you get. And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globe Trotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.